today's demo, I'm going to start with ideation, and then I'm going to walk through into one plan and sort of walk through the roadmap concepts and, and all the functionality that we have uh, to support that. So I'm here, I'm actually in Teams, and I've got my ideation uh, website up, and I've got a number of campaigns. One of my campaigns is new product ideas. And so we can crowdsource these ideas and then bring those into, into one plan to further vet and bring forward. So if I just click on this really quickly, you can see I've got a couple of ideas in here that have got some votes on them, and we're, we're out capturing ideas from the organization, um, from anyone who may have a role to play or may have uh, a voice in this who wants to provide an idea of something that they've seen. Perhaps it's an improvement to a product or a whole new product within a category. So you can see we've got a couple of ideas in here, and, and the concept would be I could then promote these into one plan and vet them from there, and ergonomic keyboards has been moved over. So if I jump over to one plan and I look at my product portfolio, and we've lined this up by our various product lines, and so you could see here that there's that ergonomic keyboard, it's still in a proposed stage, and I have a bunch of other products. Before I dive into those, one of the things that we think is really important, and you can see it here, we are associated objectives. We are aligned to specific objectives within the organization. And captured here in one plan is our entire, you know, the corporate strategy. So we have these components here as well. We have our corporate objectives, and underneath that we have our key results. So we've captured that information here, and, and just like we could associate our enterprise architecture to that or our, our overall product project portfolio, today we can also associate with that in my in the product portfolio uh, where we are within that within that list. So if I jump down here to my uh, product alignment view and I expand that, you will see, as I showed there a minute ago, we've got this organized by product line, and within that, I have my associated objectives. So I have a clean, a clear understanding of the relationship between our products and our corporate objectives, which products have a profound impact on a specific corporate objective. And if we prioritize those objectives, then we have an understanding of how the product portfolio is impacting the goals of the organization. That linkage is very important for us to understand and to have that constant visibility to that as we make decisions. I'm going to dive into this particular product and spend some time here. So you can see it has a it has a governance workflow. So I can follow along sort of that typical process of new product development as we go. It has information that may have started over in, in the ideation stage, but is now moving forward. We have a product vision and so forth, prioritization. So we've prioritized this particular product itself and overall health. Down here, we're also tracking other associations. So we want to know what personas map to this particular product. We want to know competitors and so forth. We may also want to know key results going back to our corporate strategy. Which specific key results does this product have an impact on? And so in any other types of into or points of, of of intersection that we want to track, we can track those here. So we have a keen understanding of where this product fits in our organization and its role in driving us forward. What we also want to know is we're going to work on this product and take it to market. When do we need resources and what resources do we need? So we can leverage our resource planning capabilities in our tool to map out the types of roles we need, the, the quantity of those roles, and in some cases maybe the named individuals that need to be a part of this overall product delivery exercise. So that we have that visibility to that and can understand how the demands of this project or this product rather map against all the other products in our organization and the other work that we're trying to do to understand where we may have resource and bottlenecks. And you could see just based on the color coding here where we may have some challenges and we're going to have to navigate and work through those. Likewise, the product itself has a budget. It has an investment. We need to understand that and understand where it's coming from, both in terms of the cost of the resources and other costs we might want to track. What is its budget? And how are we performing against that as we go forward and develop this product? So specifically for the roadmap, if I jump over to the work plan, I'm going to look at a few things here. First off, we're going to look at the list, uh, the schedule view. And here's what I want to do from a roadmapping perspective. I want to first start by 
plotting out my release schedule. And I'm just going to shrink that so you can see it a little bit better. Move that over. And you can see that I've got this, this overarching release. So I've set up my releases. And in each release, we're going to review a backlog. Ultimately, we're going to get to some development of new features or new capabilities within our product and then launch those and so forth. And I can go here and view. Uh, I can view the timeline and see how my releases view, you know, and provide that sort of customary type of view of where those releases land. And I'll show that a little bit more later in the actual corporate roadmap. But I wanted to show you first how we can set up those releases, view that as a schedule. And now if I switch over to uh, my backlog view, now I'm going to go a layer deeper. And I'm going to look at my feature list and where we're going to put, put the various components and things that we need to build. But I want to start, I want to, I want to kind of dive into a slightly different view before I get into sprint planning itself. And here I can see we've prioritized the features themselves. So we've done some analysis of the various features that we want to, we want to deploy. And we've used weighted shortest job first uh, prioritization to understand that the customer account dashboard is our highest priority feature set that we need to work on and on down you can see the different features and how they rank so that's that's important information for us as we're making our planning decisions to understand the priority of the various features and where we should invest our time and how we should line them up to the release so back to my planning I can now look at all of those capabilities I'm going to just show my sprints on here and now I want to plan at the very tactical level how do these items make it into uh, the sprints that that map back to those releases? And so you could see in here that you know I haven't put everything into this particular release, so I could start to align these items uh, to which sprints I want them in, and just keep adding them to sprints and giving that capability. You could see as I do that, the sprints are being populated with the items that I'm adding to that particular sprint as I plan this out, and as the start of each release, I would revisit this and decide, has something come into play that we need to add or bump forward? Do we wanna revisit our backlog, which is right here on the screen? And what is the next sprint we're going to do? Uh, you know, in the, in the, or the two or three sprints we might do in a release? And where are we gonna put these key user stories and product backlog items so that we advance the, the, the development of the product? So it starts with, defining what that product, the product is and where it fits to our strategy, what resources we're going to need over the, the life cycle, what is that budget, how we're gonna lay out our releases for this particular product, and then get into the tactical planning of when we're going to deliver on specific features and user stories as we move forward with that new product development and you know, progressively launch those capabilities. So we've sort of worked through all of that. That's for one product. Now we want to kind of take it back to the portfolio level and I'm going to jump back to here and we have a couple of other views that sort of bring this full circle. One is I might want to go look at my board. So I'm going to go look at the board, a board view I've created that shows which products are in proposed, active and on hold and so forth. But I've also created lanes on this particular view that shows those product lines. So I can see the interrelationship with between the different products within a product line and even across product lines and where we are. What's my portfolio look like? Some are in proposed, active, and so forth. And then I'll conclude here. I'm going to go to my product roadmap by product line. Here's all my products. This is my overall product map. And as you can see here, if I hover over it, these are when those different releases will be. There's release one and release two of that particular product. So now I can see how do those releases interrelate with each other. You can see a couple here that are very close to each other and so forth, and then some are staggered. So we have a complete picture of where's our product roadmap, when are those releases occurring. We also can see on here the status of our projects or our products rather. You can see one is red. We might want to dive into that in a bit more detail to make sure it stays on track. We understand sort of the interrelationship once again between products within a product line as well as uh, across product lines where applicable. And we have that complete picture. So in this demo, we've looked at ideation and you, know, you might capture that using Microsoft tools like uh, ideation apps and teams. We've looked at how we vet those products, how we make decisions around them, how they align to our strategy. It's crucial to understand how the product portfolio 
drives forward the organization's overall objectives. And then we go into a, pro a product where we can define uh, everything we need to know about that product from its personas to its competitors to its SWOT analysis and so forth, figured out what resources we need, what is the budget and how we're going to track it, planned our releases, and then started to manage our backlog and align the user stories and other items to the appropriate sprints so that we can deliver value as quickly as possible. And then we've zoomed out to see how this overlays as a roadmap for everybody.